Hi everyone, welcome. Uh, I hope everybody had a great 4th of July weekend here in the States and that everyone in the world had a great weekend as well. Uh, it's getting warm here in the Chicago area, so I am inside with the air conditioning cranking and hopefully it's not going to give us a lot of background noise. Um, you might recall I did a video about Nachusa grasslands, which is a nature preserve of native uh, Illinois prairie about two hours west of Chicago by car. And uh, I showed on that some images that I took with the um, Lumix 42.5 millimeter f1.7 lens and a close-up accessory lens. And so this is a uh, B plus W uh, plus two uh, close-up diopter. Uh, you can get these online for around $25. These are single element single element. That means there's one piece of glass in here, close-up lenses. Um, but they're pretty, uh, it's a pretty decent little lens. Uh, I don't see a lot of image degrada degradation when I use that. But it got me to thinking about what alternatives that I have for doing close-up photography. And by close-up photography, um, I mean close-up uh, doing photography, but not with a macro lens. Uh, a true macro lens gives you a one-to-one -one representation on your sensor or film. In other words, if I photograph, say, a picture of this little close-up attachment, the image on the sensor is the same size as this in a one-to-one -one representation. Of course, to do that, you're, uh, even with full frame, that's going to get cropped somewhat. Um, close-up means anything less than that one-to-one. -one. So like a one-to-two or a one-to-four, um, that, that's still fairly close. Now I've owned macro lenses in the past. When I shot Canon, I owned, uh, I think every version uh, of the 100 macro that they made uh, in the EF system, as well as the uh, 50 millimeter uh, 2.5 compact macro. And I've gotten to the opinion uh, of if you're not doing a lot of macro photography, um, you shouldn't put a lot of money into a macro lens. The 100 macros tend to be fairly heavy. Uh, and of course, if you moved over to Micro Four Thirds, one of the reasons you moved probably is to save weight. And uh, even the Micro Four Thirds macro lenses are just going to be a heavier lens to lug around with you. Um, I think it's far more sensible to just have an accessory close-up lens, but like we're talking about, in your bag uh, so that you can use one of the lenses you already have. Um, I mean, if you're really into macro photography, by all means, buy a macro lens. But otherwise, um, I think you should save your money. So, uh, what I thought I would do today is show you the alternatives that I'm using and show you some uh, images just to give you an idea of uh, what the results are and also talk about things like um, what I see is, especially for if you're doing nature photography and, and trying to photograph insects, uh, butterflies on flowers, uh, working distance, uh, I think is really important and that's essentially how far away from the subject is the front of your lens. Now, the focus distance that you see printed on the lens, like on this 12 to 60 Lumix lens, is measured from the film plane, or the focal plane, since we're not using film. So this one actually will uh, focus uh, to under a foot, um, meaning about a th under a third of a meter or so, uh, which is pretty close. As a matter of fact, that's one of the alternatives, using this Lumix uh, kit lens, which is a perfectly acceptable lens. I gotta tell you, it's, it's sharp. It has a little bit more chromatic aber aberration than my 12 to 35 f2.8, but it's still a fine lens. Um, the thing about this is the working distance. When you focus close with this, there's not a lot of room between the front of the lens and your subject. The other alternatives that I have um, are I do have the 35 to 100 Lumix lens. And with that, I can use this Canon 500D accessory close-up lens. Now that's not to be confused with 
the Canon Rebel that they call 500D in other parts of the world. Uh, of course, they no longer no longer make that. Uh, but 500D, the 500 stands for the focal length of this lens. It's 500 millimeters, and the D means dual element. So there's actually two pieces of glass in here. So it's it's more corrected for aberrations than a single element close-up lens. So these are really high quality. Now. I am not sure Canon makes these anymore. They seem to be somewhat available online, a lot of used ones. Uh, some folks think they've been discontinued. I don't know. But there's alternatives. You can find other lenses as well. And as I mentioned, this is a plus two. How do you figure, because Canon doesn't go by di uh, diopters like that, they go by the focal length of the lens. To figure out what diopter this is, all you do is divide um, 1,000 by the focal length. So. 1,000 divided by 500 is 2. So this is a plus 2 diopter as well. Canon also has 250Ds, which, of course, would be a 4 diopter lens. They get you a lot closer. There goes your working distance. So I can put that on here. I also can use that with the Lumix 45 to 150 that I have. So this is the budget, uh, budget alternatives. The 35 to 100, this is an almost $900 lens new. You can find this one online new for around $150, and you find plenty of used ones for a little bit over $100. Uh, one thing, though, if I use this on this lens, this has a 52 millimeter thread, so I have to use a uh, 52 to 58 step up ring to use that on this. They do make these in a 52 millimeter thread. Um, so what I did was I set up the tripod out in the backyard. We have native uh, plants planted out there, and the purple coneflower is in bloom. So I essentially did all of these options and showing them with and without the close-up attachments that fit. So this 500D was used for everything except the 42.5, um, and the 42.5 I used the uh, B plus W two-diopter lens. So with that, let's have a look at what I did. Um, I did this video with my iPhone, uh, which I found very convenient. Um, sometimes it misfocuses on things, but uh, it, it works. It gets the point across. And then we'll come back and discuss these things a little bit further. So we'll start off here with the Lumix um, 12 to 16 lens mounted on the G95. This is the kit lens that came with that camera. It also comes with the Lumix uh, GX9 and G85. And it has a close focusing distance measured from the film plane of um, under a foot, uh, maybe about a quarter of a meter. But that means that your working distance is um, very close. So any skittish uh, critters on that flower uh, probably are going to get scared away before you can snap the shutter. Now, of course, you can add the 500D close-up lens uh, to this, but it's not going to make a whole lot of difference. It gets you a little bit closer, a little bit better magnification. These close-up attachment lenses actually give you more of an effect on the, long, the longer the lens is. At, at least that's true for the 500D. Um, so magnification-wise, we've got some comparison images coming up here, uh, which will show you the, uh, the difference. Now I've switched to the rather expensive Lumix 12 to 35 f2.8 lens. Close focusing specification on this lens is 0.85 meters or 2.5 feet, 2.8 feet from the focal plane. Um, has a good amount of working distance. Magnification is not bad at this distance, so uh, you can do butterflies without a close-up attachment. Um, but switching to the 500D Canon uh, close-up attachment cuts that uh, working distance pretty well. Uh, we're focusing on the area where the petals meet the disc of the flower. Um, those are actually uh, the petals are actually ray flowers because uh, purple cone flower is a composite. Um, I use focus peaking here to manually focus. Um, and uh, working distance, as you can see, is quite a bit shorter. Um, a little over a foot, uh, a little over a third of a meter, and now we'll see the difference.
So I was getting set up here with the Lumix 45 to 150 lens and um, a green metallic bee landed uh, on that purple cone flower and uh, I was actually able to get a shot in focus. Uh, and you can see, that, even though that's cropped to the video frame, you can see that uh, that flower fills the frame uh, at the closest focusing distance of the lens without uh, any kind of accessory close-up lens on it. Um, that lens focuses to, um, I think, exactly three feet at its close focusing distance, so uh, a little bit less than a meter. You can see the focus peaking that I'm using there on the uh, where that petal meets the uh, disc of the flower. And here you can see the working distance. So this is a really uh, nice lens because it gives you a really pretty good magnification from a long way away. And you, you could shoot things like butterflies um, with this lens without getting very close. So we'll move along here and add the uh, accessory Canon 500D close-up lens and uh, have a look at what that does. And now we've added the Canon 500D close-up lens and you'll see, you notice there that uh, we're quite a bit closer. We've cut that uh, focus distance um, by about two-thirds. So that's probably, oh, you know, it's a little bit over a foot uh, uh, working distance there. So you still have enough room to photograph skittish insects. You notice there was a green metallic bee on one of those flowers. We're not scaring him or her away, I should say. And uh, so that's, uh, that's pretty nice. And it's a budget lens. And just for comparison's sake, here is the Lumix 42.5 f1.7 um, mounted on the G95 at its closest focusing distance. That's got, you know, this is a fairly close focusing lens, and it's got uh, decent magnification, but your working distance isn't all that great. Um, it's portable because it's small and light, um, but it's not it's not inexpensive it's $350 and now we've got the uh, B plus W close-up attachment on it which shortens the distance a bit well I think, I think you can see that in actual fact if you're doing close-up photography and you're using the Lumix system um, Really, the budget alternative is going to get you the closest, the 45 to 150. Again, uh, this, these budget lenses from Panasonic are perfectly fine. They're just not very, very fast, um, but they're plenty sharp. And, you know, they're built. They're built fine. I've not had an issue with any Lumix lens. Uh, but if you want to do close-up photography on a budget, get yourself a 500D uh, Canon, the dual element close-up lens, or an equivalent, because uh, again, I, I'm not sure if these things are still being made. You can find them used. Um, it would be a plus two diopter in another system. Try to get a dual element close-up lens because it's going to give you better uh, correction for uh, aberrations. But it gives you really nice magnification uh, without getting really, really close to the subject and potentially scaring it. You know, after I was done doing all that, uh, there was a Red Admiral butterfly uh, that was visiting the purple cone flowers and also a little wild bee, and I got a couple shots uh, of those with this combination. So have a look at these. Um, I think you can see that uh, the quality is, is it's good. Um, so anyway, let me know what you think. If you have any comments or questions, any questions that you have, I uh, try to read all my comments and answer questions. Uh, well, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, and if you did, please like and subscribe. And I've got more videos in the pipeline, so stay tuned. And I will see you next time.